Gold prices have crashed. Gold prices have crashed. Since 2011, gold has plummeted more than 25%, and the worst may not yet be over. The Profit Strategy Newsletter at ETFGuide.com warned its subscribers the gold bubble would pop, and it has. Our gold alert given to subscribers in early 2013 resulted in a 500% gain. What happens next in the gold market will shock the entire globe. Join today at ETFGuide.com and get a $50 bonus by using promo code SAVE50. You're listening to the Index Investing Show. This is America's only weekly program focused on the important stock and bond indexes and the financial products that track them. And now presenting your host, Ron DeLegend. Ron DeLegend. Well, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. This is the Index Investing Show. Coming up on today's program, gold. It's a sucker's paradise. I'm going to highlight some of the things happening in the gold market and why this continues to be an absolute head fake, an absolute false rally, and gold resuming its downturn. We'll get into that. We'll also talk about some of the top sectors within the S&P 500 and year-end tax saving strategies. Dan Dolan will be joining us. He is the Director of Wealth Management Strategies at the Select Sector Spider ETFs. Now, these are nine ETFs that divide the S&P 500 by their industry sector. So, for example, XLK, that's the ticker symbol for the Select Sector Technology Spider ETF, just tracks the technology stocks within the S&P 500. So, within XLK, you take a look at some of those top holdings. You've got companies like Apple and Google and IBM, AT&T, Microsoft. In other words, all the top technology companies that just make up the S&P 500. So we're going to talk about some sector strategies, how you can build a customized investment portfolio, and then some strategies for how you can uh, reduce your tax bill as 2013 comes to an end. Now, if you'd like to join us to talk about a particular stock, mutual fund, ETF, I'm game. Just give us your first name along with your city. You can call the program at 877-711-5611. You can also tweet the program live at Index Show. At Index Show is my Twitter handle. Or you can email me, ron at indexshow.com. So, U.S. stocks rose for the week, giving the S&P 500 index its longest winning streak since February. Now, we've got the Spider S&P 500 ETF, that's ticker symbol SPY, since the beginning of the year, ahead by 24.5%. It's been a pretty good year for the, the U.S. stock market. And on, on the other hand, for bond investors, not such a good year. Uh, the total U.S. bond market, as measured by the Vanguard a total U.S. bond ETF, ticker symbol BND, is now down just over 4% since the beginning of the year. And that particular uh, area continues to be weak. Uh, bond market, especially long-term bonds, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, that the Federal Reserve's Q-ternity or not, we're talking about QE, never-ending QE, that's what we call Q-ternity, with or without that, with or without the Federal Reserve buying long-term U.S. Treasuries and trying to suppress interest rates, take a look at the facts. Long-term Treasury yields are up 28% year over year, and interest rates are still rising, regardless of what the Fed has said and regardless of what the Fed has done. This is why we pay attention to market prices because they are a leading indicator. We don't listen to what the Fed says. We don't We don't try to guess when they're going to end tapering. It's all a bunch of nonsense and a giant distraction. Follow market prices, and it's hard to go wrong. In the IPO market, we're talking about initial public offerings. We haven't had an IPO market this good, this delicious, this hot since 2007. And Twitter rallied 60%. 
in its uh, initial public offering, which occurred on November 7th. So I guess the IPO market, for now, pretty hot. And there's other companies waiting in the wings, hoping to repeat Twitter's success. Twitter's market size, wow, pretty frothy. They have a market cap that's larger than Netflix, just to give you an idea. Netflix market cap around $19.5 billion, so Twitter exceeds that. And, and, and you thought that Netflix was overvalued. You thought Netflix was frothy. Well, I love Twitter. Don't get me wrong. It's got a great platform. We use it all the time. But it's one thing to like a company's product and a completely other thing to discuss whether it's a good investment and whether it's a good value. So we'll have to see what happens with that particular stock. Nevertheless, taking a look at other areas of the financial markets, we uh, we have all nine industry sectors within the S&P 500 in positive territory. Uh, healthcare stocks continue to lead. This has been a good, good performing industry sector. Biotech stocks, of course, leading that charge. XLV is uh, the healthcare a spider ETF, and that ETF has been outperforming, that sector has been outperforming the S&P 500 uh, by around almost 10%, and XLV ahead by just over 33% since the beginning of the year, so pretty good pretty good performance coming, still coming out of the healthcare sector. Um, in terms of earnings, earnings for the third quarter have been pretty good, and we've got so far 449 companies that have reported uh, for the Q3 earnings season, 75% have exceeded analyst predictions for profit, and 54% thus far have beat sales estimates. That's according to Bloomberg data. So we've got 449 of the 500 S&P 500 companies that have already reported, and we've got all nine industry sectors, like I said, in positive territory. But nevertheless... There are some warning signs. We've got the VIX close to 52-week lows. The VIX, of course, the fear indicator. And right now, take a look at the VIX. It's down to almost 30% in value since the beginning of the year. And it's really dropped precipitously here over the past month, month and a half. And really, the VIX signaling that there's not a lot of fear by stock market investors, stock market participants at this particular time. And so from a contrarian perspective, we like to look at things the opposite way because, well, if we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always got. And if we always follow the crowd, well, that's not a very good formula for success, is it? And so in terms of contrarian indicators, we've got the VIX not hitting 52-week lows, and yet the S&P 500 and other major stock indexes hitting all-time highs. So in technical terms, that's what, what technicians call positive divergence. And it is a little bit of a warning sign. And uh, actually, our latest, our latest weekly ETF pick at ETFguide.com, we focus on volatility and the VIX. We've had multiple trades on the VIX over the past several months, and we've hit it. We've hit it, I have to say. The VIX is not something you buy and hold. You got to be in, you got to be out. But almost every time the VIX has dropped below 13 this year, it's been a pretty good buy. So if you want to check out our latest weekly pick, uh, just go to etfguide.com. And while you're there, pick up our November newsletter, which has just been published. It's been released to the wild, and it's jam-packed with uh, strategies for making money, including my mega investment theme report, top-yielding ETFs for you yield hogs, and a global picture of what's happening in the equity markets and the ETFs that follow all the specific industry sectors along with single countries. There's a ton of single country ETFs out there, so... Uh, go to etfguide.com, check it out, and when you do, use promo code TRADE50. Coming up in a little bit, we're going to have Dan Dolan with us. He's with the Select Sector Spider ETFs. They just redesigned their website, 
and they've got some awesome tools. We'll talk a little bit about that. Also coming up, gold, a sucker's paradise. Any gold bugs listening to the show? Well, you're going to love what I've got for you. 877-711-5611. I'll be right back. All right, 877-711-5611. That's the number. You're listening to the Index Investing Show. If you want to join us, we're here. You want to talk about a particular stock, mutual fund, ETF. You want to talk about uh, the economy. Uh, You want to talk about rising interest rates, the Federal Reserve? I'm game. Like I said before, the focus by the media and by Wall Street uh, on the Fed's timing for ending QE or what they call tapering QE is a giant distraction. The fact is interest rates have been rising. You take a look at the long-term yield on 30-year Treasury bonds. And that's what the Fed has been buying in order to try to suppress interest rates. And over the past year, we've got a gain of almost 30%. And what that has presented when you follow prices is an opportunity to make money. See, instead of just watching the, the, the boat uh, pass you by, we've used that as an opportunity to make money. You should. Why, why, uh, why ignore it? Why not take advantage of it? And the way you take advantage of it, one way is first of all, uh, taking a look at some of these inverse performing treasury ETFs, which have been outstanding performers, ticker symbol TBT and TMV, which have all gained uh, double digits uh, on a year-to-date basis. And I think there's more gains ahead, especially if rates continue to rise. So forget what the Fed says, forget QE, None of that matters. Market prices are what matters because market prices are a leading indicator. 877-711-5611, we're here. Uh, Did anybody play the Twitter jackpot lottery this past week? Twitter shares up 60%. It's interesting, though. The social media ETF, uh, that's ticker symbol SOCL, SOCL actually was down. So... Uh, we're seeing seeing some uh, some uh, what you call divergences there in terms of performance. The social media sector not doing well, but Twitter, of course, uh, shining in its IPO de- debut, and uh, we'll have to just monitor that and see if uh, if that pretends weakness in Twitter's stock price ahead. So the social media ETF not really celebrating with Twitter SOCL down on the week. Now, we've warned you about the danger of buying mutual funds because at at this time of year and and being aware of the mutual fund year-end tax trap, okay? How many times have we talked about this? But I need to talk about it again and again and again because some of you just don't get it. November and December are the most dangerous months of the year for investors with money in taxable accounts. Now, in the process of investing in mutual funds, buying mutual funds in November and December, many investors unwittingly incur capital gains from these mutual funds. They get stuck with a tax bill and it's something that you can avoid. It's something you should avoid. It's a rookie mistake and you shouldn't be making it. Now, there are three ways this happens. Mutual funds invest in stocks that pay dividends. They collect the dividends and pay them out to you periodically. That's number one. Number two is funds will invest in bonds and other types of income-producing securities that pay interest. They collect the interest and then they pay that out periodically. Finally, mutual funds will sell one of their investments for more than they paid for it thereby making a capital gain. And they keep track of these gains and, and offset them against any capital losses. And they'll, like the other types of uh, income, 
and gains will pay them out to you periodically, typically annually. And usually that these distributions happen in November and December. So all of these payments, whether in the form of income or capital gains, are called distributions. And the fund decides whether to make these periodic distributions monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. But most of the time, this is very important, most of the time these mutual fund distributions occur near the end of the calendar year. And that's where we find ourselves right now. And the amount you receive depends, the amount of uh, distribution you receive depends on how much, how many shares you own. So a fund goes through a two-step process in making distributions. First, it declares the amount of the distribution it intends to make, and then it sets the appropriate amount of cash that will, it will need uh, to write you a check. So let's look at two common misconceptions that investors have about mutual fund taxation. Misconception number one, as long as I don't sell my mutual fund shares, I won't have to pay any capital gains tax. Ta-da! Boy, is that wrong. The mutual fund within its portfolio is continuously buying and selling securities. Each time it sells one, it has another capital gain or a capital loss. Now, since the tax law considers all of this as being done on your behalf, you participate in your fair share of that gain or loss at the time the fund declares a capital gain distribution. So when you eventually do redeem or sell your fund shares, any capital gain or loss from your original purchase will be reported on your your tax form. That's a Schedule D, Form 1040, just like other investments. But one easy way to avoid getting blindsided by your mutual fund with an unexpected capital gain and tax bill is by paying off this kind of capital gain tax and and well you can avoid selling your mutual fund shares for a gain just before the end of the year but but the point here is that you don't want to invest or buy new shares right before a distribution It's, it's a very bad idea because if you buy the funds shares right before the distribution, what it's going to do is create an immediate tax liability for you. And that's what you want to avoid. If an investor buys a fund today and the fund declares a distribution tomorrow, you're going to be on the hook for the amount of that distribution, even though you never experienced, may have experienced that capital gain, the benefit of that distribution. So there's no profit in owning a fund on the day it goes ex-dividend because the amount the shareholders are to receive is deducted from the value of that fund the same day. So remember this. And this is one of the reasons why we emphasize owning tax-smart, tax-efficient investments in your investment portfolio. And of course, ETFs are a core part of that. Low-cost index funds, which ETFs are, are a, a, a way to avoid this type of this type of tax liability because most ETFs are are excellent. They do an outstanding job of limiting your tax liabilities, and so you're not going to get a surprise tax hit or tax distribution, and you can continue investing any time of year. But with traditional mutual funds, it's not like that, especially active mutual funds. We're going to talk a little bit more about this coming up later with my program guest, Dan Dolan of the Select Sector Spider ETFs. If you'd like to join us, we're here, 877-711-5611. That is the number. Coming up in a little bit, I want to talk about gold and how the gold market, the precious metals market really, is a total sucker's paradise. And we're going to talk about the great gold crash of 2013. It's one of this year's biggest investment themes. And it's an investment theme that the gold experts never saw coming. And most of them, after being completely blindsided by the great gold crash, are still in complete denial. So we'll talk about the great gold crash and how to position yourself for what lies ahead and to make some money in this particular market. Now, my November ETF Profit Strategy newsletter is out. Uh, I encourage you to pick up a copy. Go to etfguide.com and uh, do join us. Uh, We've got also our weekly pick, which uh, you get 
along with the technical forecast, which is updated twice a week. This is the Index Investing Show. I'm Ron DeLegge. Coming up next, Dan Dolan with the Select Sector Spider ETFs. I'll be right back. The Index Investing Show with Ron DeLegge. You've heard them on the radio and seen them on TV. Gold experts promising big profits. The truth is, gold prices have crashed, and investment demand is down over 50%, according to the World Gold Council. While gold experts keep promising higher prices, the Profit Strategy Newsletter at ETFguide.com told its subscribers the gold bubble would pop. Our gold alert given to subscribers in early 2013 resulted in a 500% gain. Listening to gold experts would have lost you a boatload of money. Listening to ETFguide.com would have helped you to profit. Stop listening to gold experts and stop following the crowd. Subscribe to the Profit Strategy Newsletter at ETFguide.com and make money. Our no-bull approach is world famous, and what happens next in the gold market will shock the entire globe. Join today and get a $50 bonus by using promo code SAVE50. We'll tell you what to buy, what to sell, and when to do it. Be ready for the next big move in gold only at ETFguide.com. The select sector spider ETFs divide the S&P 500 into nine industry sectors. You can overweight or underweight any industry sector that you want to own and create a customized portfolio that suits your investment outlook. And we're pleased to have with us Dan Dolan. He's the director of wealth management at the select sector spider ETFs. Sectorspider.com is the website. Dan, welcome to the Index Investing Show. Thank you, Ron. Let's begin with uh, talking about the breadth and the broadness of the stock market's rally. We've got all nine industry sectors as the S&P 500, not just posting positive year-to-date performance, but all are up double digits. So which sectors, performance-wise, have impressed you the most? Well, it has been a broad rally for us in 2013. I would say that the cyclical sectors have have been impressive, you know, the consumer discretionaries, industrials, but... When you look at it, all that's happened in the press and you know in the public eye around health care, that the health care sector up over 30% year-to-date has to be a standout. And I think it's a number of factors. Uh, the demographics clearly play into that. But um, with all the ups and downs, the starts and stops that the sector has uh, had to deal with, uh, the stocks have done extremely well. The other one that I would say that you know on the low end of the sectors in terms of the out-and-out performance but still up double digits, uh, the utility sector, in the face of a pretty bearish fixed income market, and you would look at that sector as a fixed income alternative, that sector is also in the double digits. So uh, equity income, uh, as a little bit of diversification in the portfolio, has proven to be pretty good in 2013. Dan Dolan joining us. He's with the Select Sector Spider ETFs. SectorSPDR.com is the website, and the sector spiders divide the S&P 500 into nine industry sectors, $73 billion of assets under management. Now, going back to the website, sectorspider.com, under investment strategy on the navigation par, it covers tax planning strategies, I think, that make a lot of sense, especially as 2013 comes to an end. Now, let's just talk about one particular strategy, taking losses in an individual stock and maintaining experience sector exposure with the corresponding sector spider ETF that follows that same sector that the stock belongs to. Can you maybe give us an example of how this would work? Yeah, sure. And I think that the, the time to start thinking about tax planning strategies is now. You know, you have six, seven weeks to make these moves before year end. Um, again, we've had a rally in the equity side. Some pieces of the market haven't done as well, whether that's emerging markets, fixed income, some commodity-related products. So, Whatever you're thinking, it's time to do it now. What you're referring to here is, is really just making a very smart tax trade. I think that the, the biggest fear people have when they you know, go to sell a losing position is that the day I sell it, the moment I sell it, it's going to trade up. What we know with ETFs is that the, the portfolios are transparent, so you know what makes up the portfolio. I'll give you the perfect example. People that own Bank America or Citigroup um, or any one of the financials you know, five years ago, Bank of America was in the 50s. Citigroup has had a reverse split, was the equivalent of 500 plus. Now you're sitting in your portfolio today with these losses. You like them going forward, but you have gains on the other side of your portfolio. 
what you know about those two stocks is that it makes up about 12% of XLF. You could sell them, realize the loss in your portfolio, buy XLF at the same time, maintain exposure to those two stocks plus the entire financial sector for 30 days, and then if you want to reestablish those positions 31 days later, you could go in and buy uh, Bank America and buy Citigroup again, or just hold on to XLF that has 12% exposure to those stocks and get the greater diversification of the entire financial sector. Makes total sense. Now, um, if we talk about another sector, the technology sector, I think back to the late 90s when this particular sector had an unbelievable run. Now, at that time, in 1998, it it represented only around 11% of the S&P 500. But by March of 2000, the dot-com boom had pushed technology stocks to almost 40% of the S&P 500's market cap. So how can the sector spider ETFs be used as a rebalancing tool to minimize these types of market extremes? Well, what's interesting is that you have, you know, by owning the pieces, you can control what that piece represents in your overall portfolio. So you don't get overweighted in one particular sector if you monitor it. I would add to that that it doesn't only happen to your portfolio, my portfolio. It happens to mutual funds. It happens to index funds. So what you're talking about here, not only did the tech sector become 40%, it was 40% of an S&P 500 fund. And when that fund, you know, when the sector crashed, as you mentioned, 2000, 2001, 2002, that you were overexposed to that sector. So owning the pieces, knowing what you own, Regularly rebalancing to a reasonable level will minimize your risk and exposure to that particular sector. What we've seen over the years is that when big sectors get overdone, that's what causes market corrections and for the market to correct hard. So monitor those sector exposures, know where you are, and you have the ability to weight your portfolio to meet your own objective. If you're just joining us, you're listening to the Index Investing Show. We're pleased to be talking with Dan Dolan, Director of Wealth Management at the Select Sector Spider ETFs. SectorSPDR.com is the website. Go there. A lot of good, uh, useful tools and uh, also redesigned. It looks great. Now, let's talk about the Alps Equal Weight Sector ETF. That's ticker symbol EQL, which just turned two years old and has easily outperformed the uh, Dow and it's kept up with the S&P 500. How does the equal, waking, e- equal weighting in EQL work, and why do you think it's a strategy that might make sense for some investors? Again, very similar to what we talked about a little bit earlier, is that maintaining sector exposure, knowing where you are, and not being overexposed to a particular piece of the market makes a lot of sense from a risk management perspective in your portfolio. All the equal weighting uh, portfolio does is to take the nine sectors, 11% apiece, and rebalance on a regular basis so that you're never getting overexposed. As I mentioned earlier, the tech sector in, the early in 2000, the financial sector in 2007, 2008, became the largest piece of the market, was up to 35 40% of the S&P 500. Guess what happens when that corrects? Your whole portfolio comes down. So um, the Alps Equal Weight Portfolio is a very simple risk management strategy to minimize you know, your sector weightings and minimize overexposure to any particular sector. What about buying or the danger of buying mutual funds during the final two months of the year? Tax-wise, you don't want to get clobbered, and we see investors time and time again making this mistake. Talk about that. You know, it, it, it's, it's, like you said, it happens all the time. And in the mutual fund world, pretty much October 31st, uh, everyone knows or has a handle on what the distributions will look like between now and year end. In a traditional mutual fund, gains and losses will, will accumulate throughout the year. And in a year like this, there could be considerable gains in a portfolio. If you buy a portfolio now, not only are you buying into the portfolio, you're buying into the gains that are in that portfolio. And that the, the management teams pretty much know at this point what those distributions will be. So it is possible to buy a, a mutual fund today and get a distribution in December of capital gains. So if you're looking at traditional funds, looking at a, a, a mutual fund today, before you buy anything now for year-end, make sure you look into it and find out what does that portfolio look like. Are there gains to be distributed between now and year-end? You don't want to be on, on the hook for somebody else's gains. 
One last thing before you take off, not all sector ETFs are created alike. And it's important, I think, for people to understand that low expense ratios are important, but so are tight bid-ask spreads when it comes time to buy or sell your sector ETF. Talk about that. Yeah, it's, it's all ETFs. I mean, you know, what you see in the ETF marketplace is that, you know, there's 1,500 ETFs that are out there. And many trade, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, billions of shares a day. Some don't. And what you find in any security that trades is that when you see greater volume, you tend to have tighter spread. So the difference between where you can buy it and where you can sell it, the bid off, offer spread. So um, if there's a few pennies between where you can sell it and where you can buy it, you know, if you turn around and sell it, you're going to be, you know, you're going to receive less money when you sell it. So you want to find the most liquid securities you can find, find the ones with the tightest spreads, and minimize your overall cost. You can find them. There are, there are you know, hundreds of ETFs that trade with penny-wide spreads uh, in the marketplace today. And I'm pleased to say, too, that the Select Sector Spider ETFs, if you look at the daily trading volume, they lead in that area. Dan, great interview as always. You're listening to the Index Investing Show. Go to SectorSpider.com. I'll be right back after this short break. The Index Investing Show with Lon DeLegio. All right, this is your last chance to get in. 877-711-5611. How did you do to this past week? How have your investment portfolio been doing this year? Have you even bothered to look? Take a look at your investments. Look at yourself, self-assess, reassess. And the way that we do this on this program is we will do a portfolio report card for you if you're too lazy to do it yourself or you just can't get around to it or you don't know where to start, my portfolio report card will tell you if you're on track or if you're off track. We take a look at your investment portfolio in five key areas. Cost, risk, tax efficiency, diversification, and performance. And then after we evaluate your investment portfolio in each of those five areas, I sign you a final grade of either passing or flunking. And the, we do a letter grading score of A, B, C, D, or F. And of course, if you get an A or B, that's a good score. If you get a C, D, or F, well, you need to do some work on your investment portfolio. So get in touch with me, ron at indexshow.com, and I will look at your portfolio. And who knows, we may even feature your investments on this particular program. Of course, we do that anonymously so as not to reveal any personally identifiable information. But nevertheless, we get right into the details of your investments, breaking it down by allocation uh, to, to specific stocks, mutual funds, or whatever else you may own, ETFs. We look at the allocation. We look at the performance, the fees, the taxes, all of that. And uh, we do this anonymously, of course. But the point here is to help educate you about the truth of you, the performance of your investments and then to help the rest of our audience to learn from this. Ron at indexshow.com is my email address if you want to get a, a free portfolio report card. Also, if you'd like to follow us, at Index Show is my Twitter handle. Tweet the show live. You got any questions throughout the week? If you ever miss our regular radio broadcast, you can pick up our free podcast uh, just go to iTunes.com and search for us. Just look under the Index Investing Show. We're also on YouTube, so you can listen to the program that way. Again, just search under the Index Investing Show. Now, coming up on next week's program, Chad Carnes, Chief Market Strategist at ETFGuide.com, will be my program guest. And we're going to be talking about a, a broad array of various topics, including the VIX, and volatility and why it's so low. We'll also talk about rising interest rates. And one other thing that I want to discuss with him is the Dow Jones Industrial Average and just how much of a flawed benchmark that is. Hopefully none of you are using 
the Dow Jones Industrial Average as an investment in your portfolio or using the ETF because it is just a horrible, horrible benchmark uh, for measuring the U.S. stock market. So we'll talk about that on next week's program in a little bit more detail. Chad Carnes of ETF Guide will join us. And again, if we're here, you want to reach out to us and talk about a particular stock, mutual fund, ETF, 877-711-5611. At Index shows my Twitter handle. And my November ETF Profit Strategy newsletter is out. Go to ETFguide.com, pick up a copy. So let's talk about gold, which has, is in the midst of a, a crashing. It's not over yet. Now, I know the gold experts and the gold bugs want you to believe that the worst is over for gold, but it's not. And look no further than Mr. Know-It-All himself, Peter Schiff, who back in June went on CNBC and said that gold can certainly make a move up to seventeen or 1800 and that when the world figures out the position that we're in, that's the U.S. debt situation and that how the government is over-indebted, when the world figures that out, as if they already haven't, Schiff says that gold's going to go to the moon. So what's happened since Schiff opened up his mouth in the middle of June declaring that higher prices were ahead? Well, since then, gold has sunk another 7.2%. Now, it's worth noting that this is the same Mr. Schiff, the same Mr. Goldbug, who in February told Market Watch that he was sticking to his $5,000 per ounce gold forecast. This guy's insane. And before that, on December 6th of 2012, Schiff told Yahoo Daily Ticker that gold was still in an uptrend. Is this guy out of his mind? Does he even look at charts? Does he even pay attention to price action? To be fair, Schiff is not the only gold expert who's been long and wrong about gold. He's joined by a venerable list of other smart money guys, and when I say smart money, I really mean dumb money, that remains bullish on aspects of the gold market and precious metals and other metal-linked assets like miners. That venerable list includes people like David Einhorn and Dennis Gartman and James Turk and John Paulson and James Grant and Mark Faber and the whole, a whole bunch of them. Now, for the rest of the world, not the ones with its ostrich head buried in the sand, but the other one, it's important for you to understand a few facts about gold. Number one, global gold investment demand is down 68% over the past year. That's according to the World Gold Council. That's a, a Q2 2013 report that they issued. So gold investment demand down 68% over the past year. Gold's already met, in terms of price action, the generally accepted definition of bear market. It's down over 30% from 2011 peaks. Another fact is that gold and other precious metals are still in the midst of a severe technical downtrend. Trend. So if you want to catch a falling knife, well, go ahead and be my guest. I don't advise it. I don't recommend it. Also, take a look at gold and its performance relative to every other major asset class, and you'll see that gold is underperforming, even when you compare gold versus long-term treasury bonds, which have been absolutely horrible. Gold manipulation or not, and I know this has been a big topic with the gold bugs. Oh, gold prices are being manipulated. That so or not, being short gold or being completely out of gold has been the right place to be. So over the past two years, gold has been a sucker's paradise. And the lead sucker has been Peter Schiff. Well, not so much so, I guess. He's been making a mint off of it from the suckers that have been buying gold from him, right? From his gold company. But this has been a sucker's paradise. And I've got a chart. At ETFguide.com, you can check out the article. It's called, uh, titled, Gold, A Sucker's Paradise. And the chart shows how gold, as tracked by the Spider Gold shares, that's ticker symbol GLD, has had at least 17 notable false breakouts since 2011. I mean, that's just an incredible. 17 notable false breakouts or bull traps since 2011, each one of these false breakouts has inflicted financial damage on suckers 
who bought gold mistakenly thinking that a bottom was in place. Now, what have we been saying in our ETF reports, in our newsletter, in our weekly picks, in our technical forecast? forecast at etfguide.com well we've been saying the exact opposite of what all these gold bugs have been saying we have been telling subscribers that the right place place to be has been to short gold to short silver and the miners and if you want to find out what our latest setup is on the precious metals market just go to etfguide.com i can say and I, i i say this with utter confidence that our our best trades this year have been the short gold trades and that continues to be the case ticker symbol dust which is one of the etfs we've used multiple times this year aims for triple daily opposite performance to gold miners has gained almost 60 percent since mid-february when we issued that report at etfguide.com we told subscribers that gold miners were a sell And the way to play this was to own DUST. That's been a great performing ETF. We also had some option trades for those of you that use put options. That was one of our best uh, trades this year. So look at the charts, pay attention to prices, don't listen to gold bugs, and don't be a sucker. That's the message. Well, that does it for another episode of the Index Investing Show. Glad you could join us. We'll be here again next week, same time, same station. And until we meet again, may the market indexes be with you. The opinions expressed in this broadcast are not necessarily that of our advertisers, sponsors, or broadcast partners. The discussion of investing is general and should not be construed as investment advice or an offer to buy or sell securities. Listeners are responsible for their own investment decisions and results. Before investing in mutual funds or ETFs, always consult a prospectus for risk, charges, expenses, and other information. Read the prospectus carefully before investing. Past performance is not indicative of future results. No reproduction or dissemination of the index investing shows permitted without the expressed written consent of its producers.